Hi everyone, welcome to today's panel. I'm Angelica, I'm an author and professional events host and I'm delighted to be joined today to be talking about how to get press for your podcast, a great topic that we're going to be diving into. So just as a starting point, I would love you to introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about your work. Should I start? Yeah, okay. sure. I am Miranda Sawyer, I'm the audio reviewer for The Observer and I've been doing that for 16 years. Um, and before that, I was just a normal journalist. Uh, I started in a long time ago, in 1988, writing about music and uh, things like that. And then I started the, being the radio reviewer, uh, yeah, 16 years ago. And it is now audio reviewer because podcasts came along around about a year or so in. And I started reviewing them as well, really, because otherwise you just get stuck, especially on The Observer, you just get stuck reviewing the Today programme over and over. So it was really exciting to me that podcasts came along and kind of gave me something else and more interesting or more diverse to write about, really. And that's what I do. It's a weekly podcast, comes, a weekly review comes out every Sunday, and I can unpick it a bit more for you about how things get in, but that's essentially what I do. Okay, thank you. So I'm Francesca Tarauskas and I work for Pod Bible magazine, which is an independent magazine and it's the only uh, physical magazine that is dedicated to podcasts in the UK. I'm the digital editor, so I'm in charge of the um, content that goes onto the website and also the newsletter, which goes out once a week on Wednesdays. And uh, yeah, aside from that, I'm also a podcaster and podcast producer myself. So I have a couple of podcasts that are under a, uh, a newly created network, the Tremula Network, uh, which is basically just a way of me consolidating them into one place. Hi, I'm Claire Lynch. I'm an uh, audio producer and um, a radio producer and presenter. I, um, I've worked with Surrey Radio since 2014 when they first, first um, began both from a presenting and producing side and I've done a number of projects with them and then from a kind of audio producers my audio production work I have worked with um, the photographers gallery the Paul Mellon Centre for British Art and various kind of charities activists um, so I do my own projects and then I do them for other people and I guess I'm here to talk about how I've achieved press for the projects that I've done. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. I'd love to just get a little sense from the audience. Who here has um, a podcast at the moment? <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> who's, who's thinking about starting one? Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's, some, there's some decent numbers. Okay, so just to set the scene a little bit before we dive a bit more into getting press, what do you guys think makes a great podcast? How can you stand out in a really saturated market? Miranda, starting with you, you, you review them for a <laughs> That is difficult. There's, I mean, there are a lot of different... There are a lot of podcasts, I mean, without a doubt, especially since when I first started, where a lot of the kind of interesting stuff was actually coming out of America. So you... I mean, you have to think about it, because less so now, because I think people have started thinking about it. And I would say that women generally are less prone to this, but there have been in the past just a couple of things where... Mostly blokes just thought sitting around in a, in a room chatting was enough. It isn't enough. You need to edit. I think a lot of these things is you can be... If you, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing a podcast that's just fun, two funny people chatting. I've got no problem with that. But you need to have a very solid world that's, in, that's completely created within that. And that's often done through editing, to be honest. And I think that people sometimes think that they can just, you know, kind of rock up, chat for an hour, bang it out, and that doesn't really work. I would say that, I mean, I'm aware that I'm not kind of giving you many clues as to how to stand out, but the main thing, I think, is that what you need to be doing is stuff that you're interested in, and really stuff that can't be told any other way. You know, there's lots of different mediums, aren't there, out there? You can write, you can... Um, film stuff, you can do lots of things, but audio is a very particular, and particularly podcasting is a very particular medium in terms of how you communicate with the, with the audience. If you think radio tends to be chuntering in the background and you've got a kind of, you know, you've got to think about that you might be talking to kids as well as adults, it tends to be podcasts, tends to be headphone listening. And what does that mean? You know, what does that mean for your, for your interest? And I would say always that it's hard, I mean, it's particularly for people who are starting podcasts, it's harder than you think. 
don't think that you can just bash it out. You really have to think about what you're doing, maybe practice it a bit. And I'm aware that I haven't answered your question at all. <laughs> but it's to well, do you with... you told us what not to do. With yeah, it's, well, I, well, I think that's quite important in life. Oh, it's it? very helpful. You know, to know what not to do, and then you end up with what to do, I think. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, Francesca, do you have anything to add on what you think makes a great podcast? Uh, yeah, I'd very much echo that. You can tell the podcast that people have put effort into, so, so do... That, that effort is worth it, essentially. Do make sure that you're putting in a little bit of effort in there. Um, and I'd also say the ones that really catch my eye when they come in are ones that are playing with structure a little bit. So if there is an interview podcast, if there's something in there that is just a little bit extra, like there's some audio clips in there or there's stuff that is um, added on at the end that's a little bit extra, um, th those really do kind of catch my eye. So something that is um, really thinking about again that audio structure and thinking about any extra audio elements that you can put in that just elevates it above a, a conversation that's being recorded yeah it's that like care isn't it you can hear it then mm, yeah. yeah absolutely thank you i think it's sort of trying to find something that one that like miranda says that you're interested in two that people haven't already done to death and three that you have some kind of unique perspective on you know that you can come at it from, um, you know, from a particular angle, a particular point of view, one that is suitable for audio and that has a reason for people to be listening to this. And, you know, we've just been, I've just been in the narrative um, audio one and, you know, they spoke about kind of um, six months at the minimum for, for, um, to make something. And there is that sense of, like, you know, when you're thinking about what you're doing, if you were going to do it, pitching it to somebody, you really need to kind of clarify and establish what it is you're trying to set out and do. And taking time to do that, you know, um, so that rather than having the, uh, the two men that sit in the room and think I can just talk about football, which already exists pretty much out there, what is it that you're doing that you can share something different, you know, and then that what not only hopefully interests your listeners, but equally may interest somebody in the That's press. interesting as well. I think if you think about the, the fact that you just said it has to be you, like, I mean, it's not the same, but in radio quite often, like, say, if you're going through a commissioning kind of process with the BBC, you might have a brilliant idea, but, that, you know, what they'll do is put Sue Perkins in instead, do you know what I mean? So, like, they t you, you need to kind of have a thing that is yours, really, that you mm. can... And that will bring its atmosphere. You know, whether that yours thing is you and your friends being really funny, or whether that yours thing is your unique perspective on the way, on the way that, that, on your topic, or maybe you have an access to someone that's got, that had, I, I don't know, joined a cult and it was really mad, but it, only you can talk to that person. I think that that is, yeah, that's really, really important because there's a lot of kind of um, uh, formats out there that actually could really be presented by anybody. And that's, you know, that's what happens. The idea gets nicked and then they put in somebody more famous. So you have to, yeah, really think about what it is that you want to do and what it is about you that's, you know, and it doesn't even have to have you that far forward in the, in the podcast. You can be the person producing it, but getting really beautiful interviews, that's fine. But it's, it, it is really about your unique thing. I think that's a really good point. Mm. Basically making yourself indispensable to yeah. the show's success or its narrative. Something else I'd love to ask, you mentioned before about uh, video. Um, there does seem to be this big trend towards video-based uh, podcasts or at least having some elements filmed for social. I think it's a little bit of like the diary of the CEO effect, where it seems to be that that kind of took off and then lots of people thought they had to film it. What are your thoughts on having filmed podcasts? Do you think it's necessary um, for a podcast success? That's interesting. Well, personally, it's for me, it's like, the beauty of a podcast is that you're talking directly into someone's ear. Yeah. It's this really kind of intimate experience where somebody is talking to you. But also the beauty of it is that they could be talking to you as you, whether it's you're lying in bed and listening to it as your kind of bedtime, you know, the last thing you do of the day in a completely immersive sense, or it could be something that you're doing as you travel somewhere. It's that portable thing. As soon as you have to watch it, it stops being portable. You then have to kind of... But then, then you start having to take in all those other things that when you cut out all those visual things, the audio then, you know, it's able to kind of, um, you're able to experience, the, the, you know, and immerse yourself in that sound in that place. Yeah. You can time travel if, you, if you're just using audio. You can do all sorts of playful and creative things. But as soon as you bring the video in, you shut down so much stuff. You can't kind of 
Um, you know, you could have two different things happening concurrently in an audio space, where you've got levels of different, of, whether it's in two people's voices that start coming in out, or a soundscape, all sorts of things. But if you start bringing video in, that's lost to me. I, I, personally, I mean, I guess for a, you know, I have teenage sons who, who that's how they consume podcasts at times. But I bet they're doing something else at the same time. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> they're like doing like a million resources. Well, I think that's the thing with video. It's easy to have a video on and be doing other things. There is something that's kind of all-consuming about listening to a podcast. You tend to be just mainly doing that. It's funny, though, isn't it? So, like, if you think about in terms of um, getting press, right, so the visual element is completely irrelevant to me because what I'm reviewing is audio. And I have argued, actually, in the past that that I should be almost like reviewing audio books as well, like interesting audio books, because what my argument is that I'm reviewing stuff that you listen to, uh, you know, and don't look at, and isn't music. So why would it not be audio books as well? I mean, you're just as likely to listen to an audio book as you are a podcast when you're walking the dog. It's the same kind of relationship. Um, and the visual stuff is fine. I mean, you can use it on socials. I think that's possibly quite good. You know, a nice photo of you and your person that, you're, that you've been talking to or an explanation of the show, little bits like that, that's fine. But it's absolutely completely irrelevant to me mm. when, when I'm reviewing it because it, I'm, it's, it's audio that I'm reviewing. Mm, that's very interesting. Well, coming on to that and the topic of, of today about getting press. So I'd love to hear some of your tips and advice for how you think you can generate media attention and I guess what you look for as well when it comes to something great, great to feature. So Francesca, talk to me a little bit with Pod Bible. What do you look for in a great story if you're going to feature a podcast? Um, so one thing that I would say is because we are quite an indie publication, um, we try and cover indie podcasts as well. So do get in touch with us if you have an indie podcast. Um, and, the, and, and following on from that, we have a lot of people that get in touch with us and that's how we find out about them. Because if they haven't been in the newsletters that I'm reading, I won't necessarily know about them unless they approach me. So it is something which I think a lot of people assume that the press is going to come to you at some point, which they, they might do if you do get into lots of places and you get quite big. But also we spend quite a lot of time listening to podcasts. So we don't have time to go and find them all the time. And it will be something that approaches us if it comes into my inbox and gives me uh, a, a, ideally a story that is relevant to for example, a calendar date or something like that, um, that that's something which makes my job much easier. Mm. So I, I would say absolutely, especially to indie podcasts, don't be afraid of sending out emails to the places that you want to be. Mm. Amazing. Okay, so to dig into that a, a little bit more, if someone was to approach you, mm. how would you like them to contact you? So what kind of information, what does that email look like? Is that sending a press release? Um, is it pitching a story idea? Like how thorough do you want them to flesh out what you think that you should be writing? Um, I mean, we, we spoke a little bit about being your authentic self and I think that does apply to how you're approaching um, press as well because if you aren't a PR person, you don't necessarily have to write up a, a press release and that kind of thing. If you are approaching me authentically and saying, here's a podcast, we're very small, but I think you'd like it because, um, I'm, I'm still going to read that email. Um, and I'm more likely to listen to the podcast if you are um, uh, reading the stuff that I write as well. So <laughs> it is something which, like, at the end of the day, especially with an indie an, an indie uh, magazine like us, we like to know that you're reading what we're writing because we're putting a lot of work into that. So if you've told me that you've read an article that I've recommended a podcast and your podcast is similar, that shows that you've put in as much effort to getting in contact with me as you would do with contacting the observer. Mm. Yeah, doing yeah. some research. I would say, like, if you're, if you're doing it for any publication like The Observer, so whatever it is, The Guardian or The Times or, you know, anything that's kind of a mainstream uh, piece of media, there are certain things that you really need to do. And one of them is don't tell me your, your, your podcast is coming out today. <laughs> like, great, I can't review it. <laughs> like, I'm not, I've, got, I've got to listen to it and I've got to write about it. It's, and, like, you, what you can do is find out when people's deadlines are. Like, if I'm writing about something on Sunday, I've got a file on Wednesday. So get it to me at least the week before, at the very, very latest on the Monday of the week when it is coming out. So you just have to think about it. So if somebody is reviewing 
whatever, this week, you know, and it comes out on a Sunday. Other people's come out on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. They're reviewing the past week. So you need to have it in, you know, they'll be filing two days before, and you need to have it in pretty much at least a week before that. So tell people before that. And then, you know, if you, say, if you give it a lot of time and you've got some audio, you say, this is the first episode, it's a bit rough, you know. Um, then also, you can follow up and say, oh, just a reminder, it's coming out on Thursday. We sent you the thing. Don't worry about being pushy. I get so many emails. Honestly, I can't tell you. I get loads and loads and loads of emails. So if you, just do, if you send me three emails about the same thing, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Because... I got a lot of emails. So you might have to remind me that it comes out on July the 5th. I might have forgotten. But the date is really important. I mean, it's so basic. So many people send me stuff, and I think, when does it come out? I don't know. Like, tell me the date. Tell me what it's about. Tell me, is it like a seven episode that's dropping all at the same time? Is it like going to be weekly? Is it going to be monthly? Give me all the really basic details, and then tell me what it's about. Because... You know, for instance, there'll be something, you know, it's a newspaper I work for, so it's tied to the news a bit. I have a lot of freedom, I'm lucky. But say, for instance, you know, we have Pride Month. So obviously, that's completely relevant to something that I'm going to be writing about. So, you, you, know, you, you know, that's a good point to raise, you know. So maybe you're, co you know, you can put in your, in, in your email, maybe you're covering, you know, might be good for Pride Month. And, or a sports event. It's about sports. You know, it's fairly obvious things. That you, just a little hook. You don't need to tell me how to write it, but just say, oh, there's a little hook that this might work. And then you need to think a little bit about the, the publication. So I have, on a good week, 900 words, and I have 750 words on a, on a week when they've got an advert, right? That's all I've got. And it used to be that I had 700 words and three box outs. So that meant I could cover probably six things, and now I can cover three, maybe four. So that isn't that much space. It's really not very much. You know, I can do things, maybe I'll do something in a couple of lines or something. So it's, you know, it's not much space, and I'm writing for The Observer. <laughs> so I've got to think about the readers as well, and I've got to cover radio as well. There's so much stuff that's coming in. So if you, you know, if I don't cover it, it, it might not be because I think it's rubbish, or it, it just might not work for that particular week. It might not work for that particular publication. So you can keep banging on about it. That's fine. Just keep saying, oh, hello. Sorry. You know, you didn't write about it, but that's okay. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't mind that at all. And if you're going to other places, like, say, if you're going to the Times, or Fiona Sturgis, she writes about um, stuff for the Independent, podcast for the Independent. She's the same. She will need it to be new coming out that week, and then she can write about other ones that, you know, dates are really important. It sounds a bit stupid, but it's really, really important. And then if you perhaps have a podcast that started small and then got really big, you could say, hey, we started small, but, you know, I don't know if you know, we've now got loads of listeners. And I'll be like, oh, that sounds quite good. Maybe I'll have a listen to the second series, or maybe I'll review it when it comes to the end of the series because I've missed it. But you just have to think, it's a newspaper. <laughs> it's news. So you need a bit of newsy mm. around it, really. And the other factor sometimes I find with new podcasts is you can't expect a good review just because you made it. <laughs> and that sounds really awful, but it's true. If, it's some, if somebody gives me something new and it's not very good and they're very early in their career, I just won't review it because I think, why be a twat? <laughs> but, like, you know, if you, if you are incredibly established and you make a, a podcast and I think it's rubbish... I will say, I don't think it's, this bit is good and this bit is not good. Mm. But, you know, this is, I'm aware that probably within this room that, that there are people who are early in your career. And there will be a, a state, perhaps I think more with Fran, where you would be bolstering people. But unfortunately, I'm reviewing it. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, you really might not get a good review, but it's, that doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Listen, I, I won't be horrible. Listen. And you might not agree, but if I've got a couple of points, then you could maybe think, oh, okay, maybe I could do that differently. I wouldn't, I'd never review in a horrible way unless you're a twat and really established, and none of you are that, <laughs> so you're fine. So. I really enjoy that we've gone from the trajectory of like, everyone wanting to get in touch with you. <laughs> no, no, you can. Not really, quite you can. so sure. No, really, you, but honestly, gonna, you really you, can. You're going to make a, a promise that it'll be nice to anyone who says Yeah, always. Like, festival. I'm always nice. But, like, if yeah. I don't, but if I don't like it, you don't like it. And that doesn't yeah, mean fine. that it's rubbish. It just means that that's my opinion. I always try and back it up. Yeah. That's just the nature of reviews. 
doing. Do you think that you always have to have a news hook? Because it can be kind of hard, I think, to always find one. It's hard. I think you do. I think you do. Yeah, I think it depends a little bit, but I suppose you've had people pick up on various different podcasts. Yeah, think? I think, yeah. you know, like with this, we the second series we did, um, I did a series called Sculpting Lives. It's about um, 20th century female sculptors and 21st century series two was 21st century. And with um, series two, we had uh, our final episode was a bumper episode on public sculpture. And that was very much, you know, in the public conversation at that point with, you know, sculptures being put, in, you know, put in the, um, into the docks in Bristol and all sorts of things. And so it was... So we ended up having to, um, they, we got some interest from the Sunday Times, but the episode wasn't finished. So it was a case of like having to get them an unfinished, being prepared to share unfinished work with them, being able to give permissions really quickly, being able to mm -hmm. buy images really quickly, but really kind of, you know, Miranda talks about being news, but you know, you have to sort of be aware that that means you need to be really on your toes with being able to supply things to their deadlines. Yeah, photos are important as well, actually. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, when um, I was very fortunate that Miranda wrote about one of my, sort of, one of my first commissioned podcast series that I, um, Soho Them, that I did for the Photographer's Gallery. But with that, I had to get several people to, you know, r fill in forms and do various things, but it had to be done to time. And I think or every time I've got press, whether it's been from a small local newspaper through to a national newspaper, it's been very much, can you supply pictures, permissions, all these different things to a very tight deadline and, you know, make it easy for them. If you can't make it easy for a publication, the likelihood is that even if you've got to the point where they like it, it might not happen because you haven't, you know, got those things in place ready for that kind of one, two, three days at the most that you might need to turn it around in. Would you say that, like, it's important, like, you know, if you make something really brilliant, like you've made a brilliant podcast, that you should put as much effort into the press about it, the PR about it? Well, you want people to listen to it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that might sound... I think you need to... Um, you know, I mean, in that early stage of, like, when you're getting something commissioned, you, you know, you write a lot, you know, you, you get really spend time making sure you've got that one paragraph that is going to catch somebody's eye from a funding situation or, or a commissioning situation. I think equally, if you're going to send an email to either of you, having that one paragraph that, that is going to quickly and easily, you know, draw somebody in, or I'll be able for them to decide the other way around, that it's not for them. So something that's really not, um, you know, that, that explains itself very, very quickly. Um, and concisely. Mm. And again, coming back to that thing of we can tell if you've put effort into your podcast, we can tell if you've put effort into the email as well. So the amount of times when you get an email that is obviously a mass email that's gone out to everyone versus one that's checked your name, checked the days you work, checked your deadlines, that automatically elevates you. So Yeah, because yeah. it's just, it's like any job, isn't it? I mean, you know, your jobs are busy and you know, you try and cram everything in difficult. And it's the same with journalism. It's the same, you know, everything comes at you all the time. And so anything that makes it easier is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And some places, like, I mean, you know, some, if you're doing stuff from, you know, you want, uh, you know, aim high, you want it to be covered in Vogue. <laughs> you know, like Vogue is written so far in advance. You know, everything is, that's, you know, it's really hard to be, get an indie thing in there, not just because their deadlines are so long. Mm. With, a, with a print magazine like that, what kind of lead time would you say you should leave? Like four months. Yeah. You know, mm. ma yeah, massive. Claire, with, um, with podcasts where you have had success with, with getting coverage, what, what's helped get that, those features? Is there any process that you've used? How have they come about? Often not from sending an email with a press release. <laughs> Very rarely. <laughs> Despite what we it. said. <laughs> you know, to be... But, you know, I, I had um, a friend of a friend who I said, can you ask Miranda to listen to this? And I spent this overly apologetic message going, oh, I really hope mind, you don't mind me asking this, blah, blah, blah. But literally, rinse, well, not rinse, but use your contacts really well. Yeah. Uh, but also, be really nice and generous in your general daily life. So if somebody asks you to do something, yeah. it's, you know, I think it's that whole sense of, like, if you live a life where you're quite giving and then you ask other people to do things, the likelihood is that they, they will feel more enticed to help you. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's, you know, I, when I did a, a 
radio show during lockdown that I you know, literally got some um, for Surrey Radio where the day before we went to lockdown, I got a torch and went and got the equipment from this place and built this studio in my bedroom and started off. But I, I, I've, I spend quite a lot of time with... I have a Google alert for certain things. I, have to, I follow people. I find out who, who's doing things on Twitter. I follow them. I, in terms of knowing what people do and listening to them and paying attention to them and when it seems like the right time, supporting or being, you know, commenting in ways that feel right, if it's, like, authentic, you know, like, in that... But really trying to kind of... Um, you know, I use Twitter... I, uh, yeah, generally speaking, I use Twitter for that. Mm. You know? I would say that journalists generally use Twitter more than the general public. They're definitely quite Twitter. I mean, Instagram is quite important, but now, but I think, I think that Twitter for journalism for, for sure. definitely for journalists. That's what they use. It's because Twitter is like a newsroom, and journalists will love that. Mm. So um, I would say definitely, if you're going to concentrate on socials, I would do. I'd say Twitter. And does that mean you need to be an active user of Twitter, like building up your own profile or just using it to scout opportunities? I think if you've got a podcast that you want to sell, I mean, you literally get, you could even just get a Twitter handle for your podcast. You know, that's quite, that's quite important and just keep, you know, keep banging it up more than you think you ought to, <laughs> you know, until you're embarrassed. Um, I think that's quite good, really, because, it, you know, people are busy and it takes a long time for, to get people's attention. But And then, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing that's quite nice about podcasting or even an event like this is, you know, people call it networking, but actually it's just being part of the ecosystem. You'll meet people that you like and then you think, oh, that's that person, I'll follow them on Twitter, they follow me, you know, and you end up chatting to people and then without even meaning to, you're kind of, you know, like we don't know each other very well but we kind of know each other mm. because that's what we do so you you, you that's it's just been part of that that mm. ecosystem i mm. think if you're interested yeah definitely so we've talked a bit about uh reviews and how to get reviews for your podcast what about trying to pitch to get more kind of um thorough features so say you have an individual episode and you think there's some really great great quality stuff in that and you want to maybe get some press around that episode any insights or, or thoughts on how you can pitch to get that it's, I would say you're going to have to pitch it as part of a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. So, because if it's just an individual... I mean, you know, I have written... I've written lots of features. People just want lists for podcasts, I have to say. Mm -hmm. I do my dutiful kind of review, and then I'll do a lovely piece about such and such. But actually, they just want 50 of the best podcasts to listen to right now. <laughs> and, uh, love a listicle. I think it's the buzz. Oh, effect. God, they just love it. Especially for podcasts, though. It slightly drives me nuts. But anyway, um, you could say, you know, you say you've got a great... Um, interview with somebody that happens to be just about to being in the news or say it's with it's all news really but if you can say oh it's part of a trend that is this mm -hmm. you know and have you noticed you know somebody sent me a pitch and it didn't quite work for me but they sent me a pitch recently and they said you know there's obviously been true crime uh, podcasts for ages and ages and ages and a lot of reviewers particularly women reviewers have been a bit like oh man I'm just slightly sick of hearing about dead women can we do something different and so you know people have pitched me this is a this is a podcast and it's true crime but it's not about that it's about this and have you noticed that this is the new trend mm, and here are two other ones you might listen to mm -hmm. you know it's always three things isn't it if you can say this is my episode that's really relevant and did you know that two other indie podcasts are doing this kind of thing then that's a little a little group offering isn't mm -hmm. it that, yeah. that kind of yeah. helps three is always the Tipping point. <laughs> Three. And I would say as well, um, um, coming back to my introduction, I do have a couple of my own podcasts and they are very specifically outdoors based. And so it's not just podcast press, which I'm getting in touch with. I know the outdoors sector as well and I'm getting in touch with them. And that is where we were initially featured with some of the podcasts. It was the, the outdoors ones which were featuring them. And when you get that one bit of press, it does make it a little bit easier to start pitching to other press because, again, coming yeah. for those emails, it's something that you can write in an email, we've just been featured in. Yeah. yeah. And it catches your eye. Mm. Completely. I mean, with, you know, with Sculpting Lives, it was those art magazines that got mm. it first, you know? And then the Arts Council shared it on their, you know, on their Instagram and then their, their website. It was going that way. You know, and being very spe especially, you know, a direct and specialist approach, but also not just articles that are about podcasts. You know, sometimes, you know, if yeah. you're wanting a feature, it may be that the magazine 
has a regular feature in it. So, you know, I've got, I was featured in Time Out for something where they're looking to um, feature a, I forget what it was called, a something Londoner. But they, you know, they, they're, and I, so in the one they wrote about me, it was podcast. But it, it literally yeah. is, they have a regular slot. So if you think you've done something that will fit with that slot, it's not always mm. the slot writing about podcasts. You know, you might get more said yeah. and a more in-depth interview published in a section where, you know, they, they have a whole page perhaps for that. But equally, I think, you know, that Miranda's point about being part of a whole, you know, we approach the Evening Standard and, um, from Terra Radio show, you know, sharing five or six shows, and they took that, but I don't think they would have taken a story about one show. Yeah. Mm. You know, and... And also you can think about certain publications that just have a lot of churn, don't they? Yeah. So if it's mm. like a daily paper, they have a lot of stuff... Or, you know, do they, they need to, they need, they've got holes in, <laughs> in their copy all the time. So they're much more likely, you know, we, you know, I write a weekly column, but there's, there's people or there's publications that need stuff every day. So that's um, a kind of way of, th have a think about that as well, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, a fairly basic question, but I'm sure something um, that people in the audience are thinking about is how do you find out who the right people are to contact and how do you get their details? You read the paper, <laughs> and you see who writes the reviews, and then you look at them on Twitter, and they've probably got it. I mean, the best, you know, in most places, it's first name dot second name at whatever the publication is, dot com or dot co dot uk. I mean, take a guess. And if it's not that, it's their full name at gmail dot com. In it, <laughs> you know, I mean, try that. Or, or you could just DM them and say, DM them. Them. My DMs address. are open, although having said that, I said that on the media program once, and I get so many DMs now that it is becoming a bit difficult. But I mean, if you go on my Twitter profile, I've got, I mean, my email is easy. It's mail at mirandasawyer.com. There you go, that's quite easy. Or if you, if you can't remember that, if you go on my Twitter profile, I've got like my agent's name and she passes everything on to me. So, you know, it's actually not as hard as you think, mm. really. I don't, I, I've never found it that hard. I just think if you make a, an intelligent guess or you go at the people via social, social media, you'll find them. How do you feel about people pitching you in your DMs? They do it all the time. And some, I mean, it depends how busy I am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's great. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that sound, does sound really interesting. And sometimes I've just got so much stuff and it feels that, that it falls through the system. Do you know what I mean? The system being... I haven't got a system. <laughs> it's not like I've got a secretary. It's just me. So, like, you know, if I'm having a really, really busy week, it, then I might miss it, you know. But you could try DMs, and then you could try, like I said, emails. You can try... Sometimes people get in touch with me via the Observer, so they'll find somebody at the Observer, and then they pass it on to me. It does always end up... I do get it eventually. It gets to you eventually. Yeah. We're going to pray it gets there eventually. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned about photos being really helpful when you're pitching. Are there any other assets um, that you should consider? And with photos, like what are you looking for in a photo to pitch for the press? Uh, well, the, uh, the biggest asset is the audio. I mean, the amount of people that pitch me, and I'm like, where is the audio? <laughs> like, the that sounds absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Could you just send me a link? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a link. So, link to the individual episode. Early link to the first episode. Thank you. Mm. And then, um, so, it, you don't need much for a photo. You just need, maybe it's a photograph, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's, say, if it's a chatty photograph, it's a photograph of the two of you chatting or whatever. You just need something sm small that, and high quality, high res of, you know, you need about three, I'd say, really. Mm -hmm. And the podcast artwork as well? Uh, we rarely feature that. I can understand. Do you, would you feature we it? Feature, yeah. We feature it. We feature it really a lot. Bigly. <laughs> Podcast artwork that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say. Is that, and um, does podcast artwork matter? Is that something you like look for if it's like really stand out or you don't really notice it? Uh, yeah, we actually, uh, to push a article on the website, uh, did an article about pod podcast artwork and, and how much it does matter and some artwork that was really good that caught our eye, essentially. Um, so, yeah, do, do go and check that one out. Um, I don't think it's a make or break if the rest of it is really good and really well pitched um, but certainly it does does help if you've put some effort into the artwork um, but yeah in terms of what what else to send over uh, yeah definitely the link um, and don't assume that everybody listens on apple Podcasts because i have not done that for a couple of months now and it's been a game changer mm -hmm. um, so make sure you send a, a universal link there's a few of them out there um, so what do you listen on uh, I, I use pocket casts Okay. 
Yeah. Um, Why? Because, okay. Because it's really nice to order things, so you can just like swipe to get it at the top of your list, and then you can reorder your list really easily. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that I need to listen to for work, I can put it right to the top of my list. But if it's something I want to listen to, and like it's been on my list for ages, I can just like bump it up if I'm like, okay, I've got some time now. How are you with Dropbox? Dropbox is okay, I prefer Google Drive, but something that has a, a kind of collection of all the stuff that you want to send in one link is also really useful. So um, yeah, like a press pack of something yeah. that has the audio if possible, uh, the press release and the pictures all together. Again, it makes, makes yeah, our it makes lives easier. easier. Mm. So yeah. you said about a universal link, so um, what is that? So it's, it doesn't link to one platform? It, it, it will give you links to all of the other all platforms. Others, right. So um, yeah, there are a couple out there and, I'm assuming I can say them. Um, so pod uh, pod link is the one that I like, um, and then you've got kite links. You've got um, a couple of others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. there, there's a few out there that um, you can use. Or if you have a website, put all of the links onto a page on your website if you want to mm -hmm. drive people towards that. It's funny because this is very much reflecting like my experience of being a journalist and receiving a lot of pictures. It's like the details mm. often that are make or break or whether or not something lands. It's it's the copy. It's sending the like the links and the photos. It's not just about the quality of the story. It's also understanding how a journalist works and likes to receive information. Yeah, definitely, it's really important. Though. It's like it's like you know the date and the audio and the pictures and the stuff. It's just kind of supersedes almost anything else, which sounds awful, but it's just because you've got to do that job and you've got to do it really quickly. Mm. So you mentioned about trends, I guess, just to wrap up our conversation um, today before we move on to some audience questions. So if you have thought of anything during our discussion you'd like to ask. Um, you mentioned about trends. I'd love to know any trends that, sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here, but any trends that you have kind of noticed, spotted, anything that's happening in like the audio podcast world that you think is going to become a trend? Perhaps if anyone has anything relevant that they might be able to. You probably know more than me. What do you, what do you think? Um, I think in, in terms of like big trends, we are seeing a lot more of um, cross-media productions. So TV shows that are having podcasts and podcasts that are getting TV shows. That's like a massive thing at the mm. moment. Um, and I've been meaning to write an article on it and I haven't. So if any writers are out there that would like to take that one off my hands, do get in touch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's definitely one of the, the big ones in terms of the type of content that we're receiving. Mm. Um, Why do you think that's, that's happened? I think, I think it's just because individuals are different. And so if something is um, being picked up as being big in podcasting, people that make decisions in television might not listen to podcasts, but they've seen that it's a big trend. Mm. So Yeah, and that's why they're getting a lot of kind of scam mm. ones, because there, there was a kind of huge trend in that in podcasts, and then now it's yeah. transferred to telly. I think it's quite interesting what you said about that thing about people doing podcasts just talking about there's a lot of ones that are just talking about shows that they like mm. and the BBC has picked up on that quite a lot and that's been such a podcasting trend for so long it's just literally you know, you know I'm a huge fan of whatever show it is yeah and I'm going to work my way through and and you everyone out there who also likes this show will join in mm. and that's like that's all the time I tell you what I've noticed which I really appreciate is there's a lot more care with sound I think mm. so you you will get an interview show uh, with you know whatever whoever it is I don't know um, uh, and you just get a little bit more thought about sound about the the the, the, the kind of bit of music the stuff that's going through it yeah the soundscaping and that happened a lot in the early days of podcasting that was almost what podcasting did that wasn't happening in audio and it came a lot from American places like Love and Radio. And now I've noticed that there's just that kind of geekiness, which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. It just makes the atmosphere much more interesting, has come back in via things like Novel and, and, uh, and those kind of uh, people. And I really enjoy that. It's, it just lands a lot better, really, because mm. it's, a, an, you know, this is audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it needs to sound good. Yeah. Claire, any, um, any trends that you, you've noticed at all? I mean, I, I, well, I guess I, 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 the majority of my life I've always tried to go away from trends, so I'm not yeah. really a kind of, um, you know, I tend to listen more to um, immersive um, podcasts. They're the kind of things. So um, uh, Bird's Eye View in Australia that is one of the most 
beautiful um, soundscape podcast that's um, in a prison in Darwin, which um, came from a woman who started doing storytelling nights, mm -hmm. um, where she, you know, she's, uh, and it's a really gorgeous program with, um, uh, she, they have a musician who's commissioned, they've got the women in the prison, they've got, and those kind of ones are the, the ones that really pull me in much more, and they are much more crafted. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm, when it comes to the ones talking about TV shows, I'm afraid that that wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I that is just not. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, my I'm thing. not. It's not yeah. But uh, but, but it, they are madly popular because yes. it is. It's an easy way to hook someone, isn't it? Like if you really like that telly show. Yeah, but then you, you know, I, 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 you know, I live in the West End, surrounded by theatres. That it feels to me, it feels slightly lazy. You know, when when I see theatre shows that are from, you know, pre, um, mm. you know, pre-existing films and things like that, it feels. I Although apparently other things things didn't do. like the film. It doesn't tell the same story. Somebody told me this on the train yesterday. Really? They were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> they went along they to were Greece and musical and they were sorely disappointed. Yes. yes. <laughs> Be warned. But I guess it's that sense of like, you know, there is great, there's huge diversity in, the, in audiences and, and don't, for, I would say don't be swayed by making, feeling you need to make podcasts about what is the current trend. No, Go definitely. back to what that what first question, in. you know, about... Yep. Um, because, Absolutely. you know, as Francesca said, you know, the work she does is very much to, geared to, you know, it has a kind of outdoor, and so there is, there are audiences for lots of different things, and it's maybe thinking about, when you are thinking about your marketing of what you're going to do, you know, look at those publications and those websites and those places that are connected to, you know, are about what you're making a podcast about, that you're passionate about, because that passion you have will come through in, in what you make, you know, and, and the time you take to craft it and all that, that makes it something that people want to listen to, not just your first episode, but, you know, lots of them going along. So, yeah, there's trends, but just be you. Yeah, Go beyond we'll it. That. Guys, thank you so much for your time today and for such a wonderful, insightful conversation. We have some time now for some audience questions. Ray. Can we have so, the lights up so we can see the lovely audience? Hello. There we go. <laughs> and I've got lots of them even more. question online asking Miranda if you could um, say your email address again please. Yeah it's mail m-a-i-l at Miranda Sawyer or one word which is Miranda like Miranda and Sawyer s-a-w-y-e-r dot com. Thank you okay there's three questions here. We'll start. Hi, uh, thank you very much. My name's Cassandra Gordon. Um, I run the Black Creative Handbook supporting black creatives and entrepreneurship and it's global. Um, the reason why I say that is, um, obviously, I look like a black woman, so I'm just going to put it out in the room. The reason why I say this is because um, when it was 2020, it was a hyper visibility of like, yeah, black this, black that, but join this, join that, and now it's 2022, and that's kind of just like petered off. And in my day job as a fine jeweler, there was all like, 50 black jewelers you need to get to know, and listicle, listicle, listicle. It was like a KFC bucket, bargain bucket, and it's just, I'm just, the reason why I'm saying this again is when I do my podcast, I don't want it come out, when press look at it, I don't want it just to come out when it's Black History Month because I've been doing it weekly, mm. all year round. And it's interesting what Claire was saying about you knew of a friend of a friend who knew Miranda. So you're in those social circles, which I'm not probably in, especially as a jeweler. So if I don't know you, and if I'm not in your social circles or your social economic bracket, how do I get featured all year round, with not just in Black History Month, and be put in a KFC bucket with other black podcasts? I should clarify that my social circle in that respect okay, cool. was a person in my children's school Fair playground. Enough, but it's still so <laughs> my children go to a, 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 a tiny state school, so this wasn't, um, you know, I'm a single mum living in social housing. I'm not in some... No, no, it's no, not, it's but not like, you know, it's social capital of, then, social like, capital. Yeah, I, I understand. It is, it, is, it is a thing of, like, how do you... You know, one of the things that was said to me, sorry, Miranda, but okay. was um, I, I've, I've been mentored. Um, I came to audio quite late. I did an MA in radio when I was in my 40s, uh, and, and then I was mentored by sound women. And then I've had other um, women who've been quite successful in what they do, where I've kind of sat down and had chats, and what they've said to me is to, as much as possible, like, lean on the people or ask for help from the people who... Um, you know, who have reached the places you want to get to, 
because, um, and I found that many times they've been really generous with their contacts. And as I say, this was the school playground. And this wasn't like, I haven't been kind of, so I think in some ways, some of these contacts might come from unexpected places. And it's that, um, yeah, ask, I, I would say ask people who are where you want to get to as well. Um, and also approach people who like have, I guess have no reason to, to help you, but you know, like, you know, reach out to people, um, be nice, be polite, be, you know, engaging and, and, and ask, because you never know. Mm. Yeah, and I would say also, I mean, I completely agree with you. It's incredibly frustrating and it has, it, it has been frustrating on other levels as well. I've done things like radio conferences where a few years ago, actually why we fo formed Sound Women, where I kept saying there's no women on the panel, there's no women on the panel, there's no women on the panel, like over and over and over and over. And it just didn't land. You just have to keep saying. But what the, the problem always with not being part of the mainstream is it just, it takes longer. It's really difficult. But I would absolutely agree with just keep putting it out in the right places. Well, if you... Yeah. No, but it's uh, like, I completely get it. You're right. So no, but you're right. Yeah. You are completely right, which is why, you, you know, people come to places like this, which is absolutely the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm giving out my email, mm -hmm. because I kind of think, well, give it out. I used to be quite funny about it. And then I thought, what is the problem? It's only an email, for God's mm. sake. Just give your email out and then people can get in touch. That's the deal. But it's just, you know, newspapers and the media are still run by certain people. Mm. And we all know, we all know that. Mm -hmm. And so you just, it's absolutely true. You have to work harder and you are completely right to complain about it. But I think that you, with determination, you can do it. Of course you can. You know, you just have to approach people that are open. I'm open, They're, everybody here is open. You can do it, come on. <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you, you're right. But I think that the world is more open, I hope the world is more open now to, to you know, not just hearing the same things over and over again. Especially, you know, I've been reviewing 16 years. Man, it gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the same thing okay. over and over. Of course I wanna hear other things. Yeah, it's like really it. important. You offer, what you know, whatever you offer is unique, that's great. But I think going back to what Miranda said earlier about also a, a group of things, whether it's three or whatever, that actually coming together with other people can really put, be also be really positive because you're, you know, there's all of you working together to achieve something and that can help not only with your own, like, to attract somebody, but also sometimes it can feel better um, to be in working with others um, because I, I don't know other people, yeah. but often I spend a lot of time working on my own. So to work like on a kind of collective approach of something that can actually mm. help the journalists, but also can be a, a more positive journey for you yourself. Mm. Yeah. Time for another question. Hi, Hi. Um, Hi. my name is Francesca Spector. I host a podcast called Alonement, and this began in 2020. I'm a couple of years into my podcasting journey, as I'm sure many people here are, you know, established podcasters. In terms of prioritization I mean this is ironic for someone that hosts a podcast about being alone but you know I, I think I speak for a lot of people here when it is very hard to do everything alone it's hard to host edit mm. you know, get that press be present on social media all of those things what would you prioritize you know at that stage of sort of not really being new but sort of wanting to take it to the next level what what would you say would be the best thing you know this is a question for you all to pour your priorities into you say? Um, this is coming more from the, the point of view of, I hear you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, and you don't have enough hours in the day to do everything that you need to do, essentially, because if you are one person, you are doing everything. Um, and I would say, I've, I've learned the hard way that it, you have to focus on what means the most to you. So if you want to get press and that's the thing that you want to do at the moment, perhaps pull back on how many episodes you make. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. You could prioritise things at certain points. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you've been making it for two years, you've already got a bank of episodes anyway, haven't you? Mm -hmm. So you could, you could say, you know, this is a, an episode I'm now going to take, you know, a couple of months off and I'm just going to do press. I'm going to focus on that. And I've got all these episodes to show people anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the, just to sorry, come back to that point, but the way that if things reviewed, for instance, is a new season coming out. So mm. I think that often in the process of making that new season, you focus on the creative aspect of it, and then there will, but there also needs to be that sort of I don't know one month sort of build up to planning the press around yeah. it. And if you were if you were doing this as part of a large company, of course there would be different people doing those different skill sets. Um, but it all, something always comes at expense of something else in mm. terms of the newness and, as you say, that you know that kind of prioritising the news of it. And the I guess for some point, in some ways, though, I know Miranda was saying like if your podcast is coming out today, not necessarily of interest. But I think it depends on what your podcast is about and whether it's very time specific. So the first one that I did for the photographers' gallery, some of the I press, so to speak, um, was going on the BBC's um, podca radio podcast hour, but that didn't happen until maybe eight months after it came out, but it wasn't a time-specific project. Yeah. The content of it was historical, so whether you heard it, which month you heard it, it was 20 years old, 20 years past was the earliest it was talking about, so it didn't really matter. So on that, in that instance, I'd already kind of found out who it was who presented the, the podcast Radio Hour. I'd followed them on Twitter. I'd looked at what they were doing. And then they happened to do, uh, you know, a collection of ones on local podcasts for local people. And I fitted in. But as I say, it took... It wasn't, it wasn't like, there's a month. I need to get press. It's coming out. Sometimes these things don't happen in that linear format. Sometimes the press might be... Um, eight months or whatever it is later, and that the content is still valuable, and the listeners, you know, people could don't, you know, the podcast is still there. It can be listened to at any time, and if it's not about a current news story or it's not very much about now, then it, you know, it is interesting, though, isn't it? Because essentially, what you're saying is, what do I prioritise? Because everybody's like completely busy all the time, aren't they? So, I think there is a, a point where you just could say, okay, I'm just going to spend a week doing social media and press. I'm just going to do that, even just for a week. That's all I'm doing. I know I'd rather make podcasts and I'd rather live my life, but like, I'm just going to do that. You can schedule you know, the social media drops or whatever. You can just concentrate it on a, on a certain time and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then just think, oh, I'll just go back to the bit that I enjoy and then I'll try again later. But it is, you know, that is a real tough one. I do think that in Britain, Particularly, I think that we tend to do it all by ourselves. You know, you go, I look at America and they're like, you know, you listen to their podcast and they ask, they thank, I mean, 15 people. It's like, I'm, I just cannot believe it. Like, it's, you know, even when I've made a podcast, I made it for the BBC, it was just me and the producer. That's it. Mm. You know, it's like, we do everything by ourselves. And that can be tough, you know. I don't know how we change that. But I think when Miranda mentioned it earlier about kind of saying what you've been doing, you know, one of the things that I've done in the past is sort of, it looks slightly self-congratulatory, but sort of in a Twitter thread, you know, this is what's happened in the last month. Nice visual, bit of text, link, you know, and do a kind of, aren't I wonderful, whatever. But it kind of, it, it's sort of, you know, it, 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 it's a bit different to what I normally might put out. It's lots of information all in one place. It kind of, you know, and I always have link tree in my bio so that you can find those things. But it's sort of, um, but I, equally, I only ever work on seasons. I don't think I could manage weekly <laughs> I, 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 on a personal basis, because I just, I, I, I think it's, it's hard. It's tough. <laughs> I, you know, I congratulate you in managing it, but because I, I, I think having that energy to do those things yeah. and that headspace, because I have to sort of switch headspace to do it, if you're going weekly, then wow. Yeah. But equally, pull in your friends then, you know? So if you know, have friends who you like their social media, go um, offer to cook them dinner or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, find out all the things that, are, that um, you know, and, and ask for help. Yeah. Okay, I think we've got time for one more question. Hiya, and thank you. Oh, that's really loud. Um, <laughs> thank you for your time. Um, my name is Sarita Fontaine, and I have a podcast called Women Who Rebrand, which champions um, natural, authentic, and inevitable growth amongst women. Um, Francesca, you mentioned um, knowing people's deadlines. Should you in e introduce yourself before shooting your shot? 
Before what? Sorry. Shooting your shot. So before <laughs> actually <laughs> sending the pitch. No, sorry. Like, <laughs> that probably that sounded really wrong, but um, <laughs> that makes sense in my head. Um, yeah, I've had people contacting, asking, uh, particularly with the newsletter, because that is a weekly thing, um, asking what's the best time to send the news over to you to get it into the newsletter. Um, and the answer for that for me is um, I, I can put it in on the day if it is relevant. So that's going to be very different to get it yeah. to me at least a week in advance. Um, so, yeah, I would absolutely like introduce yourself and ask and say, I'm thinking of sending something in. How would you like me to send it? When would you like me to send it? Um, yeah, really good idea. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much to our wonderful panel today. Thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. I'm going to give myself a little promo, which I'm not probably not meant to do, but I do have a book coming out in November called the, <laughs> called the PR Bootcamp, which is about getting publicity. Um, so you might that's probably quite handy for this. Tap her up. Yes, <laughs> order it. There we go. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.